Hi guys, my name is Meads. This is going to be a back-to-back -back review for Robot Spirits or Robot Damashi. We have Guire and Earl Cumber. Not sure if that's the proper way of saying it, but yeah. I'm going to do a back-to-back -back since uh, they're part of the same anime series, uh, Knights and Magic. I've seen uh, some of the episodes, although I'm not sure if I've... Maybe I need to finish uh, the first season. It's an interesting uh, concept, uh, and I think a lot of anime lately has been doing this, where they will take the protagonist, and uh, it's kind of like a reborn. They're reborn to a new world or a fantasy world, and based off their skills uh, from or knowledge from the previous life, they use that as their to their advantage. Yeah, and uh, this anime is no different. I really want to get the main protagonist's uh, suit. Or Silhouette Knight, I mean. <laughs> so use the Gundams. Yeah, the Silhouette Knight. And uh, I think that would be an amazing uh, figure if they ever make it in Robot Doll Machine. But uh, here are the first two. Still wondering if they're going to make more. Uh, we have Guire and uh, El Comber. Now, Guire is more of a... He's more of an attack. I think he wields two swords. Well, Earl Comber is kind of like the paladin. We have the shield and more of on the defensive side but he still has a sword right here double-edged so uh, quite interesting now I think these are uh, robot doll machines are actually relatively cheap compared to the other ones uh, which is great I got mine from Thoughts of Hobby they may still have some although I had this for quite some time now just haven't got around to review them till now so uh, that's pretty much it uh, for the box Let's start with Guire. All right, here we go. We have Guire. Now in the show, they made the Silhouette Knight uh, in the beginning, um, kind of like uh, sluggish. You know, it, they're really heavy, kind of like the Jaeger's uh, Pacific Rim, which is good. Then later on in the show, when they get their upgrades, uh, their limbs, uh, they're able to move a lot faster. And, you know, hence we have that magical thing where robots are moving as if they were human. <laughs> uh, talk about the possibilities. Well, fictional possibilities. Anyways, uh, they usually have this pre-deployment uh, where they're just sitting down. It's kind of weird, but um, this is how it is. And it does come with a base here. Or, I guess, a, a stand that goes on the other side. It's a three-piece thing that you have to assemble. And uh, here we go. We got some red. Some to be... looks like gold. Well, supposedly gold. But it's that uh, fake plastic gold. I <laughs> uh, got some uh, nice uh, paint. Here, interesting paint. You got like a band here. Um, you got the uh, topaz metallic color here. For... I don't think they're, yeah, they're not vents, but it's just there, even on the back side here. Now, the waist is uh, painted a little differently, this particular matte gray. It's different from your typical semi-gloss uh, black plastic here. So, uh, interesting color scheme. Yeah, not too bad. In terms of uh, articulation... We got the neck here, which obviously has a limitation because of the collar here, which I don't think you can remove. You got your shoulder, which is a bull joint on the base of the torso. You got some hinges. You can fully rotate that around. This is on the bull joint, the shoulder armor. Gives you a bit of flexibility there. You got your elbow. Uh, let's see. Yep, you got a bit of a bicep swivel there. And yeah, it's it looks like it's a double hinge, but it's only a single right there. Then you got your wrist joint. Now for the torso here, as you've seen, it is connected on the ball joint. But depending on how you move it, there's a tendency for it to pop out. But you have that movement there in the mid torso. The waist, it's it's kind of a little hard to move there. And my guess is the way uh. And the waist area is where the reactor is, or what powers this. You get your side uh, skirt here, connected on a peg ball joint. <clears throat> and you got your waist. You can uh, do some 
or a pretty good uh, articulation there. Now for the knee, it's a single joint, kind of like the elbow. Kind of feels like you can have another one right here, but it's only on the lower part. Not too bad for the knee. Got the knee, a nice knee armor. Then you got your ankle here. You got a heel articulation hinge and a ball joint right there. So uh, you can do some nice uh, white stance. Yeah. In terms of uh, hands, <clears throat> you got uh, another pair, just uh, relaxed hands. Other than this, and then you got your weapon. You got this uh, blade. Which, let's see if I can put this on here. There we go. So he wields two swords. It's more of the attack. Yeah, let me see if I can put this on here. There we go. Yeah, definitely a, a really cool design. to kind of balance that out <clears throat> and uh, lastly we have this two attachment now this two attachment is for the sword you can actually combine the sword let's uh, take that out and just combine them um, I think you can put it either way since the swords are identical but they're not gonna be aligned yeah, the other side is going to be shifted a little bit to the side. Still not too bad. And uh, this is uh, kind of like stash. You got just a pangle there and just put it on. There we go. Which is not too bad. <laughs> and if you want to hold it just with one I guess you can hold it with two hands yeah you got a double edge uh, sword hmm not too bad all right so that's for Guar let's take a look at Earl Comber all right so here we go next one Earl Comber it's a little weird name <laughs> all right so this is the base that uh, I showed uh, previously you're just gonna connect them and it's actually a little hard um, I would suggest to do a little bit of twist and turn. That will probably help you get them as close as possible. Yeah, there we go. Just be careful that you don't want to snap them. Alright, so likewise, put this underneath. And you can have them on a <clears throat> sitting position. Actually, you can probably put the sword. So. Let's see if I can uh, do that uh, particular stance. Hmm. It's a little uh, stiff here. Ah. Oh! <laughs> yeah, that's the problem sometimes when you have uh, this extra piece on, or the, like the guard, or, or no, not guard, the pommel the other end of the sword which kind of makes it hard uh, for them to hold it so you can have uh, this interesting stance here <clears throat> it's kind of weird uh, I can I can get this uh, close enough but you kind of get the idea maybe I'll just do it this way <clears throat> when it's just uh, sitting down like this although this one is now all the way in let's see here there we go. Eh, you get the idea. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it's not not too bad. I actually kind of like them when they're sitting down like this, just kind of like in the rest position. Yeah, so actually, this is not a, a bad idea having this. You know, although it still kind of looks weird. But anyways, uh, getting back to this, this is in terms of the design. It, it is almost identical to Guire. Um, the decals are differently. I forgot to mention that uh, this part here is a little flexible. It is painted. Now on this one though, you got the uh, nice uh, silver onto the white. You got some uh, nice uh, 
details here and there. You still have that kind of like Toba's metallic paint. You know, this is flexible, but uh, there's not much you can do with this part there. I don't think it can swing, even on the back side, it's, yeah. Articulation wise, similarly, you got a little, a bit limited on the head here, because of how the collar goes on the back. Got your shoulder, same way. Torso, side skirts, legs. The knee, get the hinge here for the heel. Actually, this one is also bulge. I think I forgot to mention that. So nice wide stand pose. I wonder if you can even. <laughs> All right. So yeah, there you go. Well, uh, quite nice. Then you get your sword here. It's double edge. It's kind of like a broad uh, sword. What is that? A little uh, dirt there. That rem reminds me of a berserk hmm. <laughs> or Garo. Uh, you can put this on the shield. Shield is a bit plain. Got the details there, and uh, you just basically push. I mean, put it in an angle first, and as you slide it in, there we go. It actually holds it uh, quite nicely. And the problem is putting this on the hand. And I might have to remove that. I would suggest to remove it from the wrist. And uh, let's see here. So I'm not a fan of uh, this design. I wish they made it so that you can disassemble this handle and you can just slide it in. But it's one of those that's fixed. You gotta force your way in there. So I'm gonna go from the lower part, from the pinky, push it up, then just gonna slide it over the thumb. So hopefully it doesn't break. <laughs> there we go. Just slide it over. Come on. All right. So once the thumb slide over, you got a better grip on that. But that puts a lot of stress on this handle as well as the fingers. Yeah, it could have been a better design. All right, so uh, let's put this back here. You got the shield. And just to show how it is with that thing on. There we go. And uh, he can uh, draw his sword. Whoops. And that shield. Likewise, you're gonna have the spare hands similar from uh, Dwyer. And that's it. Not much uh, accessories. I mean, there are kind of like the guards. Um, well, they're kind of like the special soldier. Uh, closer to being become a grunt unit. Till later on, uh, I have to kind of refresh myself from the enemy. <laughs> I'm not sure if they're like uh, commanders, but uh, yeah. Not too bad. So let's go ahead and uh, put this on to here. I think on the upgrade, uh, our Comber got uh, two, two shields on his shoulder, which is actually really cool. So he, he kept his uh, de defensive uh, stance. And again, kind of like a paladin. Then uh, Guar got, um, I think he might have gotten another pair of arms. So. But we like his swords, uh, dual wielding, or maybe quadruple wielding. There we go. Uh, it's, it's a nice set. Uh, not too bad. And um, all right, sorry about that. I got derailed. I was trying to look up words to kind of conclude the review, but I I lost it. Yeah. Anyways, in terms of the figure, they're good. Not great. And as you've seen in the review, it's kind of lacking accessories that we see on other robot spirits but in the show that's what they have they usually just hold their weapons and that's it I and mean, they have good articulation you know less the head and uh, torso but you know there, there are some limitation in terms of their design but overall they're good figures now should you get this well it depends um 
they are cheaper compared to other robot spirits uh, I think they're about forty dollars and something tells me they might go in clearance later on so if you're getting them for 30 or, or even 20 bucks that is great and uh, also this will work well with maybe with a night gun though since they have the armored suit on uh, or even the Musha gun though so something to look into uh, yeah the, I think those will work well for this and hopefully they make the protagonist uh, the main silhouette knight and or even the upgraded version of this I, I think that'll be great and I'll even uh, try to get those because even you, though I'm only getting the first one here and sometimes when you see the two available the first then the upgraded version we're more than likely to get the upgraded version but I kind of like getting the first one too because you know the Kind of like the base form they're just something within that i like anyways that's about it for this review again i got my from tatsu hobby links will be provided down below if you want to get some and i think that's about it if you got questions let me know so until then this is means thanks for watching